Hey guys, crazy, crazy week. We have all kinds of different things going on. I'm traveling to the UK, all kinds of things in between. Stay tuned and we'll take you through that journey. Here we go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. All right, guys, it's just another crazy week. Sometimes I just gotta take a big deep breath. This week, we have so much stuff going on. I'm back on an airplane. I feel like I've been on airplanes this entire winter from Japan to Spain, California, New York, and now I'm heading over to the UK to meet with Mark Wilson and do some stuff out there, which I can't wait to tell you about. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It has a lot of stuff going on, but I'll get to that in a second. Chris is getting all kinds of stuff ready for the maintenance team with all those spring cleanouts coming. I think we're at 300 plus spring cleanouts right now so we've just got to get prepped he's gonna take you through all of that stuff the behind the scenes and what we have to do for maintenance and I'm gonna take you on my trip to the UK so in about 10 minutes here I get in an uber and then on a 12 to 14 hour plane ride out there I don't even know where I'm going I just know it's the UK and I know <laughs> I should get some sleeping pills and hopefully take a long long nap this evening on that long flight in the meantime why don't you guys go check out what Chris is doing because I think it's fun I don't really know I really have no idea Chris, what are you doing? What's up, everybody? It's Chris from Team Aquascape, and I have a bunch of other Team Aquascape members. Today, we are going to be doing a little bit more training. We're prepping for spring cleanout season, which is right around the corner, as you guys have been well aware by watching and following along with the vlogs. There's so much of this process. It's actually more than just the X's and O's of the cleanout itself. It actually boils down to a lot of the extra value that we provide for the customers. That customer experience, more in particular, is what I'm talking about. So today, we are going to be running a couple phone calls with our cleanout customers for tomorrow. Now tomorrow's cleanouts are gonna be for Aquascape teammates. People like Colleen, who's our president, James Crowley, who's in our product development. We're gonna knock some of the rust off as well as use their homes and their water features as training grounds for us seasoned teammates as well as some of our newest teammates. So we're gonna do that tomorrow, but it all starts, we like to contact the customers the night before, just kind of talk them through what to expect in the following day and also just to communicate with them. Find out if there's anything that they need, anything special that they want us to pay attention to while we're out there as well as you know, maybe bring up a couple of additional things that we can offer them or potential upsell opportunities or things that we're trying to focus on in helping enhance their overall water feature experience. So follow along and hopefully you guys can get a little something extra out of this because we're gonna have some fun. All right, guys, I made it. I'm here in the UK. I'm out here at MJ Aquascapes. They call the place Pond College. And in a second, I'm gonna tell you why. But the place is absolutely amazing. What I'm most excited about is to show you not just why I'm here and what we're gonna be doing over the next couple Couple days because there's a lot of different stuff from waterfall competitions to mark building what i would say is really going to be like his dream pond he's really a fish enthusiast loves koi just got back from japan same trip we did not too long ago picked out some fish that he's been dreaming of having for his entire life since he was a child and so we're building what he's calling the koi palace a place where he can put these giant fish so that's going to be exciting hey mark hey how are you doing good man hey we're out here where exactly are we so we're in northamptonshire in England. It's right in the middle of England. Awesome. So it's, I think right in the center. I'm blown away when I pulled in here yesterday to see everything. Like, I can't believe how much you've done in a short amount of time. What is this place? So this place is called Pond College. What it is, it's an inspiration and education center for everybody. Water features, ponds, basically the whole lot. So I started here with Any Pond Limited and I had 11 pallets out the back of the building <laughs> and there was cows and pigs and Come everything on. in this barn. Then I was just renting the space two days after we bought this place on auction. One of my friends from yep. college, we were going through the hedges and he said, I want to build a big lake out here. <laughs> and here I am now, probably uh, about 15. Almost a lake, yeah. thinking about the amount of water, but. So it was just progression. Then I had two shipping containers out the front, load of stone. So I just started to grow and grow and grow. And then basically fast forward to sort of like when I started becoming a distributor. So in July, 2019, then I became the UK agent for Aquascape Inc. And in the September, we had our first 40 foot container come into the UK oh. and it all went into this one unit just here and when we actually went into this side here I was like oh my god look at the size of the space we've got <laughs> 1,000 square feet what am I gonna do with all of this space out here there was tractors trailers at one point I actually thought that they were gonna destroy my feature because obviously a tractor would be sure. parked here right next to spillway bowls and stack slate stuff and there was like 14 caravans all in this yard and I was like we need a toilet we need a better facility so we put in a toilet in the end it stops us having to pee behind 
in the caravans or whatever. <laughs> it's or, important. Yeah. yeah. And then in 2020, so one year later, and we took on the next unit, and I think we took on half the yard end. But there's still a, still a few more caravans, but because we took on the two units, it's sort of like this became ours. You know, we had control of this sort of space. And then March 2020, as we all know, if I wanted to put in a big pond here because we wanted the space, so I said to James, can I rent a bit more of the farm space? So it's more like green space. Yep. And he just said, yeah, sure. And I came in on the Monday and he literally pushed an area. He said, is that big <laughs> enough? I'm like, yeah, cool. I guess it helps their friends, huh? Yeah. And then, of course, like about a week later, then we got locked down. So then it was sort of like, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's when I started building the lockdown pond. So I built the lockdown pond over a two week period on my own. So I was actually having to jump out, and set we, the stone. We call it a lockdown pond because the COVID pond. <laughs> yeah, I used to call it the COVID pond, but someone said to me, what, you've got a pond full of COVID? And I was like, no, it's when, you know, it's just that time. It's like That's the so lockdown. Good. So literally it was a case of, it was really hard to have an excavator set in stones. And the first stone I put in was actually for Luna. It's sort of like a peninsula rock. And I knew she would sit on it and I twisted Who's it. Luna? Luna's the dog here. Hey, Luna. Hello, Luna. <laughs> Where's the fish? Where's the fish? <laughs> <laughs> so she loves the fish and they're starting to wake up and she literally, if there's a bit of movement, she's just there. She'll be there looking for the fish. So guys, here's a quick sneak peek and of course I'm going to take you on a proper tour of the whole place. But this is the lockdown pond and Luna's fish viewing room. <laughs> She's like, where are they? Yeah. It's cold, it's minus one. <laughs> She's like, oh. That's great. So I put that stone in and literally it was a case of, you imagine driving the excavator, jumping out, moving it and sort of like twisting it. Yeah. You can't strap it and do it. And then what happened is the berm was all here and the JCB actually was sort of like coming over the top of the berm and we set that giant boulder there that, and everyone was like, what are you doing? It's crazy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like, I want to build more. I want to do some more. You know, we're locked down. I can still work, you know, we're construction. So we can still send stuff out, mail order. I don't want to write a book. I don't want to do other things. I built on. So it was literally a case of, we had a big bank here and I was like, we're going to push the bank right back. And that's what we did is we pushed it right back. We planted the willows. Then we built that one. Then I was like, I want to give Charlotte a bit of space to do a bit of DIY. So I was like, right, we'll create this. We put this deck in because people were walking up the bank um, to have a look at the biofalls. But essentially yeah. it's just rolling, rolling, rolling until sort of like now where last October we actually took the whole of the rest of the building on and the other yard and then we push the firm right right back so it's just been progression the first progression was here then the next progression was there then the next progression was out to where the sort of like the digger is and then this year it's been right out now we're at maximum capacity yeah. and then you told me the next move might be pushing yeah. that way maybe, <laughs> maybe going there or bringing in an entrance through here that yeah. was, you know we were thinking about you know maybe this is all going to be turning a yard we can go that way a little bit with the barn or put another bay on here but there's lots of plans you know we just basically keep going your buddy has 67 acres here and yeah. you guys are probably occupying maybe three it used to be in half an acre so i would say that now it's just over an acre and we've got four thousand square feet of barn, barn but, warehouse space um, yeah, yeah warehouse so we keep the product in and we do a bit of work in there it's a bit cooler you know you guys can tell how passionate mark is and i think <laughs> hey, come and have a look at my snails <laughs> <laughs> which which i think is right where i was gonna go mark this is all because of a childhood passion you told me a story like when you were 11 years old actually even entering some fish and decoy yep. shows and yep. stuff like that and so your story is not that much different than mine and how i got started addicted to fishing wanting to build a pond in my own backyard to greg the owner of aquascape building a pond for his pet turtles a lot of this for some of us that have been doing it what feels like a lifetime is all from the passion we had as children and then turning it into a profession and you said this never ever feels like work for you no right yeah i retired sort of like 25 years ago. yeah i get to do what i want and it is i can do what i like if you almost we've got to obviously make money we've got to make nutrition but i don't do it for the money i do it for the passion and inspiring people yeah. we want to inspire change that's the change in the way britain builds ponds that's what we've got to do well i think it's a perfect time to just say hey guys let's inspire you a little bit we're going to take you over to mark's koi palace pond where he's going to give you a brief description of what we're going to do over there over the next what do we got three four days we've got four days four yeah. days so you know us we can get a lot done in four days it's not going to be easy by any means we got like a really a lot to do but let's go check that out and then we'll take you on that pond tour here we go. Oh. <laughs> 
All right, this is Pond College where you come to learn, to educate, everything else. We've got a group of people here today. Basically got the Koi Palace. As people probably will know, um, I've been doing ponds and water features for a long time. I've been showing Koi from Japan since I was 11, back in 1989. And somebody said to me, you're going to Japan. Where are you going to put it? And I'm like, <laughs> I'll figure it out. What am I going to do? I'm going to put it in a palace. So I'm going to actually create a Koi Palace. And this is what I've done. We're not actually sticking really to a formal shape, but we've dug out a great big rectangle, but we can make a pond within the rectangle. So there might be architectural walls curved. We might do some straight walls in the corner. But what I'll tend to do is maximize the space and then we can backfill great big planting pockets or whatever, just to have basically underlay coming up and then lots of soil or sand. What we were thinking, big deck here that can sit about four people, five people. Then we're gonna have an intake bay where the machine is. That will pump into the bottom return jets. We're gonna have lights and stuff in the architectural walls. We're also gonna have a wetland over where the machine is. We're gonna have that pretty low down. So it's not gonna be a great big waterfall going into the pond. Have three urns. We haven't worked it out yet, whether there's a painted urn inside the wetland built and then probably some little tributaries come in here, there. We can do whatever. You know, that's the beauty of having this place. It's a sort of like a, a nemesis as well, because it's like you're not sticking to a brief. The brief can change, but we've got a pretty good idea. What we want to do today, if we can, is to try and get as much done in the bottom as possible. So there's lots of architectural walls that we need to bind together and we're going to basically use mesh we might use some bolts to bolt it all together but basically backfill in and creating a whole wall and we're going to do some more flinging the rock moving a lot of the gravel the reason why it's like this and not a pond we were planning on having the pond finished but as people in the uk know we had three days of snow last week and at points it was like charlotte was like the guys aren't working out i'm like we need to keep moving forward you know every month <laughs> yeah we did and we just keep going keep going it, it's small small increments so it is what it is i'm super relaxed because i know Know that we can carry on and we'll want to do something amazing rather than rushing it and sort of like hurting people or just rushing it for the sake of it we can get it done and dusted so yeah that's awesome good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so here's what you got. Again, you can see it's more or less just a big rectangle. We don't have to stick to that shape. So he's over dug it, allowing us to have creative freedom with inside that rectangle. So if we want to backfill some stuff, create some more shape, we can do that. Unfortunately, you guys won't see it, but there's a deck that's going to come out from here, kind of leave out over the water, come back this way, and kind of keep with this formal edge in here. You can see they're using the stack slate walls in the bottom of the pond to kind of rock this in. We're going to start filling all those with gravel, continue to create that shape, and then past that, we'll be all aquatic plants on this side here which will help hide the timber wall there we've got a lot to do our goal today is really just to get this bottom rocked in so we can start filling up at least the bottom section all right guys gonna get at it we'll start going and see you soon we're gonna go ahead and start kind of from ground zero here and right here i'm going into the app that we use on our phone we happen to use square but i brought up colleen's name as you can see right there and i'm gonna go ahead and just see if there's any additional notes now it looks like right here it says spring clean out only there's training involved so they're gonna go ahead and double time the amount of time expected but there's no anything in particular that we're looking at or that we see here so what that tells me is that there's not anything that I really need to necessarily bring up but I do want to ask her about the clean out ask her if there's anything on top of the normal routine that she would like us to focus on if she's had any trouble over the last calendar year since we've been there to clean the pond list waterfall and just really kind of get the conversation going again get in front of that customer even if it's over the phone and strengthen that relationship so let's go ahead and dial her up and see how it goes Hey, how are you? I'm good. Am I on speakerphone? You are. Okay. Is now a good time or do you want me to call you back? Yeah. Okay. Oh, now's great. Awesome. Tomorrow we're going to be coming out to do the spring clean out of your palace waterfall. I'm sure you were already aware of that, but I just wanted to take a second to give you a call and see if there's anything you needed ahead of time, if there's anything important that I needed to know, and just to tell you that we're excited. There's nothing like having your water feature started. Oh my gosh, to tell you it's springtime. I can't wait. A couple of things as you head out. One of my bowls had a little bit of a chunk of ice in there still and I drained them all and scooped all the water out of them but I'm sure it's just snow melting and whatever do you want me to try to melt that out there of there tonight for you no so we're actually gonna use your water feature as again kind of like a classroom for us so we'll have plenty of hands and we'll be able to take care of that tomorrow I don't think it's a big of okay a deal. cool I do have a couple of those top hat lights yep. the landscape lights I think I have six in total and I know one I knocked over in the snow okay and I don't know if it snapped the plastic or if you can just put it back together so maybe bring one of those so you can replace it if you need to okay. so you heard the whole conversation right
So we're putting a massive wetland on this thing. It's approximately 13 feet wide, 30 feet long. The reason we're doing such a massive wetland is again, because the Koi Palace over here needs an enormous amount of filtration. Not only does Mark want to put some giant 40 inch Koi in here, we need a lot of filtration. Another thing that he's done that's kind of interesting and I've never done before is we've used our spillway walls to rock in the pond. So it gives it a really clean drop off all the way around. I think also cut the tops off and the whole idea of this edge is to make it one big planting mass throughout the entire thing. These little guys are chases so we can run lights down and throughout the bottom and then if they ever go out we can pull them out later. So we've got one here, one here, and another one over there. This edge was really important to get done because I didn't want to see this timber wall. So when Mark finishes planting up this entire thing with aquatic plants that wall will disappear. Originally it was supposed to stop someplace around here but it started working so good we just kind of kept going with it. And then we've got some walls going in up there as well. So moving right along. We've also got a challenge. I hope you guys can see this. But yep, yeah, that's a huge bubble underneath this liner. Lots and lots of rain out here the last couple of days. And so water is trapped underneath this liner, even though we have a sump going that's constantly pulling out water from underneath. So the thing's running non-stop. And eventually we'll get all that water out from underneath this thing. But coming along is great. Wetland being dug. Walls basically finished. Our goal was to get the bottom rocked in. We've got a little work to do over in here and then we'll get that buttoned up and finished tomorrow's goal finish the wetland get that done finish rocking this back edge we've got to seam the wetland liner to this and build the whole wetland so tomorrow's gonna be a full day and they're calling for i don't know a hundred percent chance of rain because that's what it does when brian leaves chicago <laughs> but it's still fun You ready? Yes, I think I am. So tomorrow you are the lead tech on James Crowley's pond. Correct. So now it's your turn to uh -huh. call him. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. Hello? Hello. Hi, James. It's Jack Halling with Aquascape. Hey, Jack. How are you? Good. How are you? So good. I know tomorrow you're on our schedule for around 12 o'clock for us to be out at your house. And so I just wanted to go over some things and see if you had any questions for us before we got out there in case you weren't out there. Before I ask, does 12 work tomorrow? Is that still a good go ahead for that time? Great time. Cool. And then will you be home for that? I can be home. Okay, cool. So as soon as we get there, we're going to knock on the door and then I'll introduce you to who's all there and everything. So we kind of go through all that and then go from there. It was nice talking to you, James. Tomorrow, we'll give you a call and I'll text you once we're on the way. Okay. All right, thanks, James. Have a good day. So we just got done with the training and uh, it was very, very good for all of us to listen to each other, take and make those phone calls with our customers. Fortunately for us, people that we know and talk to and see almost every single day, which made it very comfortable, but it allowed us to take the opportunity and make some of those small mistakes that we would like to see done differently. So we took the time to critique and kind of go over. Myself and Jack handled our phone calls to help us give much better customer experience experience and also be more efficient when we use our time communicating with the customers. So it went well. Now it's time to get into the training outside and that's out in people's backyards. So can't wait for that to happen. All right guys, the other thing I can't wait to show you because there's still a lot more is this waterfall competition that's going to happen. So right here we got one, two, three bays. There's another three over there and come Friday they're going to start getting these prepped and ready to start the waterfall competition. We're going to see at least five more waterfalls on this thing right now i gotta get back to work continue to work on our big old rec pod that we're doing over in here so let's sign out tonight i'll check in with you guys tomorrow and we'll see how much farther we can get done It is now the following day. You saw us make our phone calls yesterday and use that as a training exercise. We have the entire team here inside the office and just kind of going through, making sure that everybody's on the same page, establishing expectations, and again, going back over the information we gathered yesterday. So the next step is just for us to get in the vehicles and head out to Colleen and get started on her cleanup. There we go, small army for such a small clean out, but it'll be well worth it today. We're gonna get a lot of very valuable information kind of out there through the process of the clean out, and I think a lot of people are gonna learn a lot, including myself. Let's go. All right, so we are here. Uh, we just rolled up to Colleen's house. We're gonna go up to the front door and see if she's home, introduce ourselves, and then go ahead and get things rolling. All 
Well, it looks like Colleen has already left for the day as well as her husband, Bob. You see we have the greeting committee, two dogs, and since they're not home, we're gonna go ahead and let ourselves in the backyard and go scope things out. While we're doing that, Juan's gonna go ahead and just grab the pressure washer, clean out hoses, garden hoses, that kind of stuff. Looks like we've got a handful of debris, not too much bad cooking in here. Good, we've got our work cut out for us. What we'll do is we're gonna drain down this basin just a little bit, but we'll help use that water. to just kind of flush a lot of this stuff down as well. So we'll go ahead and bring everything over and get cruising. Colleen's wrapped up. Everything went really, really well. We've got a large garbage bag full of debris behind us, but the guys did a fantastic job. We ran into a snafu with the lights and ended up swapping everything out while we were here. So that took us a little bit extra time. It made a lot of sense to have all the extra hands just so we could all kind of work together and work through some of the challenges that we come across on a regular basis. So it's good that they see that stuff in practicum and I think we did a great job. So now it's on to the next one. Jack's gonna lead the next project at James Crowley's house. So go have fun. What's going on everybody? I know Chris said that I was taking over on this job and so I'm gonna take you guys along and show you guys what we got in store. Let me spin you around and introduce you to James. Earlier, I already contacted James, so he's already out here, but normally we would knock on the door. So without further ado, let me spin you around. So James, what do you do at Aquascape? Hey, I'm a product manager at Aquascape. And they're about 16 years at this point. Cool, Had cool. this pond for like 11. Yeah, you do a lot of product testing in your water feature and everything like that. Yep. So thank God it's not that big of a feature, but it's a perfect size feature for us to do a bunch of training today. I know we have the entire team out here to do a small little clean out and we will walk to the back and show you guys what we have. So this is the pond that we're going to be cleaning out today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our clean out tank. So the classical clean out tank is going to sit right here. And we're going to take all this clean water. As you guys can see, it's crystal clear. You guys can see everything at the bottom. We're going to take all that water and we're going to put it in that clean out tank. That way we're saving as much water as possible. Now since the pond is draining right now, we're gonna go through. Juan is taking apart the skimmer, pulling the pump out and pulling the skimmer pad and the net. And we're gonna start rinsing those down. We already have the mats out of the bio falls pulled out and that's what we guys doing right now is rinsing them down with the hose. The only reason why we're using the hose water right now is because this pond is so small and we don't wanna lose any of the water back from the pond. So we're gonna save as much water as possible by pumping all this water out of this pond and into our 500 gallon flexible tank. Come through, power wash it, rinse it down, and then we'll be able to fill it back up.
So Juan right now is going through and doing a kind of a pre-rinse on this pond. So we like to do that, just kind of loosen up all that debris that might have settled. And that way it's going to be a little bit easier when we come back into the final rinse. Well, the other guy's hard at work trimming down all these cattails. So Chris has his machete out there and he's chopping down all the cattails, making this thing look really nice. So that's what we're doing a little update right now. The next stop is the power wash. And we're just going to be careful because as you can see, there's some lilies right there. And so we just want to pay special attention, especially with how it is in the spring. The lilies aren't coming up yet and we just don't want to damage any of those lilies, any of the root mass. They are just finishing them down at the very bottom. It's, this usually takes the longest considering that we went from the top down and all that debris just kind of gets trapped down on that bottom. So it's going to kind of work their way from this side where the skimmer's at towards that pump and just kind of flush all that debris out into the clean out pump. But as soon as we get that done, we'll be able to fill this thing back up with all that clean water. And while they were doing that, I was able to jump up here with Steve and Juan and we were able to call these our biofall beautification. So we just came in here. The lip of the biofalls was showing a little bit just from settling over the years. So we came in with five gallon buckets of dirt, top dressed all this, and then did the biofall lip so that way you can't see it so that way it's all nice and hidden everything is looking really good the guys are just finishing cleaning up these cattails and taking those to the truck and then as soon as we get this thing filled up we should be done Well, the pond is filled up and we are just letting it top off with the garden hose. Today was pretty good. The new guys learned a lot. They were asking a lot of good questions and they said it was a huge takeaway. So I think today was a win. Tomorrow we're doing another training on somebody else's pond. So we will see how that goes tomorrow. Hopefully the weather is as nice as today. I know today was really good. It was a, overall a pretty good day. So hopefully you guys took a little tidbit out of this video and stay tuned for the next one. end of day two i think the weather's coming back in it's about 5 30 getting darker you can see the sun just doesn't really exist here <laughs> it's okay we made a lot of progress i don't know if you remember this morning looking at the wetland hole but this is what it looks like now boom we got it in it was hard it was probably one of the more challenging wetlands i've ever put in everything the groundwater was just out of control in this we had to put in drains we had to do that kind of stuff the drains actually go to the same drain that sits over here that sits under like that's draining the hydrostatic pressure from this it started working but still the snorkels and the centipedes started floating which caused the aqua box to float yada 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 but we're okay we've got a lot of the rip wrap in tomorrow the gravel is going to come we'll be able to finish off the top level of this with some gravel and get this buttoned up once that's done i really want to set that water level about three inches lower maybe four inches lower than water level in the pond my weir point so when the water comes up it just pushes across here really helping with the circulation you can see the spillway bowls gotten all plumbed and finished back there i just love the snack walls I'm not jealous because i know at some point i'm gonna do this and i might do a whole pond out of them which would look really cool and then just come with like some big stones or something i don't know how i'm gonna do it but i'm super excited because now i'm inspired to do something new hopefully you guys like that look too i think it looks great the other thing that happened while we were working on all this is the beginning of a waterfall competition so one of the big things things that I told you we were gonna do out here, or not me, but other people were gonna do, is do this waterfall competition. Let's actually go talk to Mark really quick and he can tell you how the competition like came to be, what his thoughts on it are, and why I'm here. Well, I'll just tell you. I'm here because I guess my opinion matters and I get to be a judge. So I'm gonna get to come in here with Mike McQueen, Mark Wilson, and myself. We have three judges. We're gonna go around with our fancy clipboards and tell everybody what they did right, which ones we love the best, and what I want you guys to do is at the end of this check out six different water features and you judge and tell me which one is your favorite this is going to be my favorite part what your guys opinion is on each one of these waterfalls all right see you guys all tomorrow bye 
All right, Mark, big day. It's competition day. So it's the Pond Advisor Invitational today where we've got five teams of two competing for the Pond Advisor Invitational winner. So everybody here gets to put a number of which box, all the boxes are numbered and they can basically put their vote in. And I'm asking you guys as well to put it in the comments section below, which is your favorite. It may be the same, it may be different. The Pond Advisor Invitational was basically a brainchild a couple of years ago, basically making sure that giving people the same kit, giving people the same sort of parameters as a garden so it's not just like here's a load of stone do what you want it's let's do the best aquatic art you know so these guys that I've hand selected are aquatic artists this year it's different last year it was a case of let's just try it, it was the debut event where John Adams was a judge we also had a referee last year Mikey was the winner of last year's competition Yay. from McQueen Landscapes and I said to Mikey you're going to come back next year and compete he said no I'm going to be a, a judge and I gave him the option and he said no I'll judge it but he said come back next year yeah i'll scuff you yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, i think you said that last year as well so yeah it's basically people don't know that ponds and water features can look like this and we've got small spaces in the uk so given an eight foot by eight foot area all exactly the same so that the basin's got to be the same so the size of the reservoir the pump's got to be the same so the same amount of flow otherwise it wouldn't be there on the competitors maybe it would actually be to their detriment you know yeah, yeah. too much water but at the same time this year same pump same basin same same size piece of liner. They can bring hardware, they can bring soft landscaping materials, they can bring, you know, some of the guys have brought loads of plants. You're gonna see a lot of dead wood, driftwood, and it's really a case of raising the standard of aquatic art. I just think it's so funny, like you see the nice boys over there come in with a, a van loaded to the point, but that's how serious these guys are taking it, right? They yeah. brought their own moss, they brought their own rocks, they brought their own plants, they brought everything there themselves to take it to the next level. And I think yeah. what you've created here is something that's just gonna keep growing and growing and growing. I don't know if you know this but by next year you're gonna need more than six boxes yeah. right so last year we had three and this year i was gonna have nine but it was like because of the pond because of building and it's like because of expansion and stuff yeah and so next year we'll probably have nine because we're oversubscribed this year i actually had to turn people away and also we'll probably change some of the bits and pieces up there may be mystery items there's captains and competitors around where it's sort of like something to emulate a homeowner it's like child will bring this or a grandmother's ashes at this place something personal exactly a homeowner might have, yeah. it's sort of almost like for me, if a homeowner wants to add to a feature, it's like I would rather have it and incorporate and design something for it right at the start rather than building something beautiful and then somebody comes and puts a, a great big gnome in there. Yeah. I would have built something for that gnome if, if that I didn't realize that that gnome was I'm special sure. to them. So, well, speaking of personal, I don't know if you know this and you take this any way you want, Mark, but your wife has asked me to be her partner. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, next year, maybe I'll get the opportunity to come back. If I come back, Charlotte and I are going to do our own waterfall nice. build back there. and We'll have to figure out that personal item. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Awesome. All right, well, let's get this thing underway today. I think it's going to be fun. I think there's going to be a ton of fun competition, probably a little bit of razzing each other here and there. I know what it's like when we do our competition back home. You know, I think we have like 20-some teams competing against each other, and they're much bigger teams. They get an entire day to create whatever they want, which is going to be so much fun. We get to check it out tonight with lights. We'll check it out tomorrow morning, make sure they're all working. If they're not working, that means they leaked. So you're automatically disqualified if it leaks. It'll be fun. I can't wait to show you guys the progress of this. You're going to get to meet the teams and we get to see what they've created all the way over here in the UK. Hang on tight. Here we go. I know I'm showing you more rain. And what I don't want to do is for you guys to think that England just rains all the time because that would be a lie. There was like 20 minutes where it stopped. <laughs> no, you can actually see blue skies over there. Just, there's this cloud that just seems to sit above the job site for some reason. And I wouldn't call it annoying, it's just as much as challenging. So it is what it is, but things are moving along. Definitely at a slower pace. I wanted to take the time, show you guys kind of some of the stuff that's been going around. We had some really talented guys come in here and cut these balls in. They just look incredible. We've got jets run down below them. So we've got jets and jets, bowls and bowls and bowls, spears, flower set and another urn. We're basically taking everything that Mark has in inventory and throwing it in his pond. We've got our intake bay in. The intake bay is just about finished. We've got three pump vaults. Of course, the groundwater is causing the vault to go up there. So we're pumping some water out right now. We're going to start backfilling this stuff with gravel. Hopefully, by the time I'm done, we'll definitely won't finish the pond. 
on. That's okay, because we'll be able to send you guys some final pictures later, but 100% I still get to show you the waterfall competition, and you can see behind me, one team, two teams, three teams are running strong over here. There's three teams running strong over there. Uh, a lot is getting done, and it's looking really, really cool. So I can't wait to show you how five different companies are out here competing against each other, and the crazy difference in what's being created with the exact same products is pretty inspirational. So can't wait to show you that. You gotta wait till the end though. It's the last day, it's Saturday. We got so, so, so sidetracked with doing all of the waterfall competitions. And I'll have to tell you, Mark takes this extremely serious. And I love how serious he takes it because it's just gonna keep raising the bar every year, making this competition kind of famous. I guarantee you within a short amount of time, they're gonna have 20 people competing against each other because of how intense the competition actually is. I don't know which one's your favorite because they're all so awesome. I'm telling you, every single one of them, I would have in my own backyard. But you tell me which one you like the best. We're gonna go through, we're gonna interview each one of these guys. I'll give you time to actually look at it, study it. You guys tell me which one you like the best. Can't wait to hear your votes. One, two, three, five, or six. Let's meet the team captain with number one and we'll see what he has to say with uh, his. Jonathan, I love it. Tell me a little bit about it. Tell me about the inspiration of the garden and kind of the design. Inspiration wise is from the Yorkshire Dales. We're from that local area. So that's the reason why I've gone with the dry stone elements. Um, and obviously the layering of the hand on as well. Um, sort of like very naturalistic sort of appearance. What we're trying to really sort of replicate is the, we're losing natural habitat. You know, it's been overgrazed by sheep and it's becoming very sort of like grassland. It's no good for, for too much. So we're trying to introduce a little bit of this is what's supposed to replicate a, like a wildflower meadow. So that's kind of what our little thing is. Yeah. Like, this is what you kind of guys need to be doing. Yeah, wet wall on that side. Sort of like the, the idea is the wall's supposed to come through the, uh, yeah. through the wall. Trying to replicate as much as possible. Then you guys, they're the speed humping with the, the mystery item. This one here is basically a net nephew is really into elephants mm -hmm. and for me it's like I would prefer the nephew or the homeowner to yeah. give me the mystery item but then I can put it into my aquatic car yeah. rather than just coming in and plonk an elephant at the awesome. end. The awesome. kids can play with it but it's you know. Yeah I would say I love your use of your mystery item that elephant down there yeah. <laughs> and just the scale of it and everything else no, looks, right. looks great. Yeah I'm pleased with it as yeah. well. Hey Jonathan another thing and I do this to myself every single time every project I've ever built I tell myself what's one thing I would do different. Well overall I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, probably would like to do a little bit more with the wall and have a bit more time to sort of like button that up and lean it up a little bit more. We actually have dialed this down on the pump, so we could run it faster if we wanted to, but I think, you know, that's what we were aiming for. Yeah. Well, like you say, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Right, awesome. Well, great job, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, boys, yeah. I love it. And I really love, like, I, I'm gonna say this to everybody, I love all of them, but I love how unique all of them are to each other. Yeah, um, definitely. Man. What I'm asking good, everybody yeah. is like a little bit, give me the story of the garden. What's the inspiration behind the entire design and layout? Uh, so yeah, it's very inspired. Have a local environment near where, near where I live. So it's like sort of peak district, kind of inspired. So we've got like, the millstone grit. You, we kind of get, um, where we go walking, it's like, um, you've got kind of like rock faces with like moss kind of yeah. creeping down it. All the ferns and like bits of conifers and stuff like that. So we wanted to yeah, very, very natural. But yeah, Peak District inspired. Trying to get lots of different pooling areas and obviously a little detail with the with the trees, yeah, just bubbling up and stuff like that. And just, yeah, lots of nice, very natural details. But I think, yeah, natural Peak yeah. District, that was the look we were going for. When I was talking with Mark and Mikey, one of my favorite parts of the whole thing is some of the attention to detail, like the little ferns, the little tiny ferns that are placed inside the stump. Yeah. Even the tiny little ferns placed in the moss wall and like, yeah. you got some like evergreeny type stuff back in there. Yeah, you yeah. Got a variety of moss. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. too, which is nice. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. And your use of the, the mystery item. Yeah. You know, pretty easy, right? Because he's oh, in a what? That's we're gonna quite put a hard one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a bit harder than an elephant. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I think Mark was actually super nice with you guys with the mystery elements. Because then when I was walking around, I was like, here's a piece of rebar, figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely love it. The other thing I was asking some of the other teams is if you guys were to change one thing, what would it be? I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out was halfway through we had to completely change all the plumbing around quite stressful so originally we were gonna have like a kind of wet wall like moss sort of mossy yeah. wall so we did it was a last minute addition to plumb up uh, the, log. the, the yeah. sump there sort of thing so we're actually really pleased with how that turned out but yeah maybe getting the uh, moss wall and maybe having a bit more of a plan on the plumbing going into it sure. so nice. turned out. anything to add no i agree yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes man that would have yeah, been yeah. awesome if you yes. were like yeah just like, <laughs> <laughs> like a different partner if <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> Great job, guys. Love it. Great job, guys. I love it. I absolutely love it. Really, really nicely done. You guys have heard some of the other questions. What's kind of the theme and the story of the road? The theme was coming down, take a chance, wing it, see what we've been given. Love it. And hope we like it. So Yeah, I think it's just amazing how a pile of stone that was sitting literally right there in the beginning of all this without you really having the opportunity to look at it that much or anything else. You just went with what you had and, and you created an unbelievable garden space here. And again, just amazing how much different this one is from that one, from that yeah. one. If there's one thing that you could change. I guess given a bit more time, knowing exactly what flows we'd get beforehand. Maybe, maybe an extra flow of water down this side. Yeah, that, that would look great. Had we known that before the end, you know, we might have got that extra one in. Tell me a little bit about your mystery item. Was it hard to come up with the idea or did it just come to you right away? Right away, and I think actually it was probably a, a godsend really. It just filled that gap absolutely perfect. Like, yeah. It just made sense to put the light in there. It's got the name Pot of Gold with that orange glow it's got. So, so, yeah, pretty pleased with our yeah, mystery item. Love Thank it. you, guys. I think the stump is set exactly at the right height. But the water level in the stump yeah. is exactly the same as the water level on the other side of it, which makes it look really natural. The use of the mystery item, fantastic. And the layout of the rocks, like, great job, guys. Thank really, you. really stunning. Love you. it. Right, guys great job love it all of them right now i would love in my backyard front yard wherever like just so impressed on the craftsmanship that everybody has done tell me a little bit about yours like you guys chose to bring in your own stone yeah so me and daniel actually used this stone last year uh -huh. and it didn't quite go the way we wanted so i felt i had to a bit of redemption yeah there you go the limestone is something that's way more indigenous to the stone that we get back home too i think the middle waterfall is one of my favorites but nowhere near as much as i love the way you guys use that log on the bottom was that something you guys had planned to use the entire time yeah yeah, yeah I'm did you know exactly how it was going to be used when you had it you just said oh okay we got to incorporate this somehow or another pretty much yeah, yeah 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 so we didn't really know we had a few different bits of wood tried from but we knew we wanted to put, put it in there somehow yeah. yeah that little nub that comes up on the right side is that part of the log this here yeah no it's not it's not it was it was it was, it was. It was part of the log it was down here so uh, it's really it's, we've incorporated it really so that piece there was actually part of the log yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. And then you put it over there. Great job. Didn't we all think it was just kind of like it came up and around and Smoke good and job. Mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Absolutely love it. But I've asked everybody else, if there's one thing you could change, what would you do different if you were to do it again next year? We actually spoke about this a little bit. For me, maybe raise the top waterfall just slightly, just to get a bit more of a fall there. Yep. But we did like, we lowered it a little just to get a natural effect, make it nice and low. So yeah, for me, that would probably be, but yeah, just raise it. Great job, guys. Absolutely love it. So you guys had two mystery items. Yeah, we've got one in there at the moment. Um, so we were given a stone that's a memorial to someone's cat. So we thought oh, we've, nice. we've added a little light in here. So there's a dead cat under that stone. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> under the tree. Uh, so that's just... why that magnolia is flourishing the way it is. <laughs> it's got a little hole in the top, so we just thought oh, we nice. can have cut flowers in there, and there's a light to highlight oh, it. Oh, perfect. After night, so it just sort of shows it up, and the cat will feed the tree. So nice. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, great job. I absolutely love it. Lee, I think it's so interesting how nervous you were about doing this. Are you feeling accomplished at this point? Now that it's over and yeah. done with? Yeah, 
really. I am, yeah. I'm very, very pleased. Was it stressful? Why we was building it? Yes. <laughs> now that it's over? No. Were you stressed? Because you didn't look stressed. No, I'm, I'm pretty easy going, to yeah. be honest. It's, it's, it's a bit of fun. Lee was a little bit stressed. I, I said to Charlotte <laughs> last night, actually, that it was almost like he was trying to start and it was struggling and then it was almost like warming up the glow plugs on a digger. You know, I sort of just chucked a few bits in and then Lee sort of then just sort yeah. of rolled with it and started and done sort of the majority of the uh, larger falls there. So uh, I will yeah. say one of the challenges, I think, is the extraordinary amount of time you guys get to do it. It almost messes with your head a little bit yeah. and saying, oh, I've got to prove myself. And you could really create this in probably half the amount of time. Yeah. But because you get an entire day, you, it's easy to overthink it a little. Yeah, you sort of play a bit more, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And the, cho the choice of rocks, I feel we had too many. Because then you're, like, you're a bit more picky. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. Trying to get that perfect one. And I think we spent quite a lot of time doing that. Whereas if we just like half the pile, we'd have to use that. Sure. Yeah, I think that probably would have been. What was the inspiration? What's the story behind it? Norfolk's quite flat where we're from. So there's there's not a lot going on there. But you know what? The last year and a half, two years, we've been coming here and seeing the sandboxes with the Sarsons folders, especially changing every single time. And it's just, uh, you know, being inspired really for Pond College, really, and, and being here. So That's yeah. Awesome. What was your mystery item? This rock. Oh, this rock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. You haven't recorded what? that. <laughs> so funny this is the third time i've said this i've asked like what was their mystery item again and the fact that it doesn't stick out actually is really well used in here that it doesn't just yeah. stick out so explain the mystery item and mystery item was this rock here and it was picked up on a family holiday they all picked it out and obviously homeowners they change they move so we didn't want to incorporate it in with the waterfalls and we wanted it right up front so obviously they can see it and obviously remember the time of their holiday as well because you never know it might have been by uh, some waterfalls or, or rivers so that's why we wanted it right nice. up front and center and i love how you use the other gravel to kind of tie it in with it so it didn't just stick out so if there's one thing you would change probably the lights yeah the lighting yeah and i would probably i, I say by lights not necessarily the lights themselves but pooling areas maybe be slightly deeper even by a half inch sure just to hide the lights a little bit more sure i absolutely love it guys great job Thank i think it's much. fantastic really really well done all right guys i don't know how you're gonna choose i can't wait to hear which ones you like is it number one is it number two is it number three is it five or six just tell me tell me which one's your favorite which one's your favorite style which one would you love to have in your backyard all right guys it's been a busy week we've got a little bit to do with our rec pond down in here obviously rain weather and all kinds of stuff cut us a little short i can't wait to come back and show you guys like how the dat turns out how these spillway walls turned out over here we're using the now spillway walls in our intake bay and the goal is to at least have some of this stuff running for you before i leave but uh, we'll see all right you guys are the best <laughs> Okay guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to announce the, the winners. So we're going to start off with best illumination, then the Bond Advisor Invitational, and then People's Choice right at the end. This year, the bar's just been raised immensely, and I want to give everybody a round of applause. So, best illumination, obviously it was a judge last night, and I want to bring Luke and Steve up for best illumination. Congratulations. All right, so third place, what I thought was crazy interesting is how last year, from what I understand, Mikey won by a landslide. It was like 15 votes and somebody else got one vote. This year, the votes were all over the place. So the points, everybody got like a lot of points. So I think you guys start by all giving yourselves a round of applause. I know I've said it, I've heard other people say it, every single one of those features back there, all five of them, we would all be proud to have in our own backyard. And so really, really good job. I could talk about it on and on, but really all you guys care about is who won, right? So third place goes to, oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> no, Lee, James, come on up here. Yeah. Very, very well. We're going to announce runner-up now. All different boxes, all amazing features on their own right. So, runner-up, JD and Paul. Five, four, three, two, one. Luke and Steve. Oh, what is this? Okay. Wow. It was exceptionally 
close. One vote in it. One vote. They were fantastic this year. You guys knocked it out of the park. So well done, all five of you. But people's choice, Luke and Tom. <laughs> Congratulations to all of the guys that competed in the waterfall competition over there. Truly inspirational. Fun to see everybody get excited about it. Congratulations to all the winners. And now we're back to work outside. We've got a few hours left. We're gonna do our best to try to get something running. So we've made some modifications in our intake bay. We've got the spear sitting here. We've linked it with an urn on the other side, a little bit higher. We came in here with more stacked walls just because chasm, I guess, is the reason behind it. But we really wanted to carry that stack slate wall deal in here because we have it in so many other areas of the pond. In fact, I really think when they finish this off over in here, Daxlate walls should come off of this rock and then swing all the way back into that wetland filter. And then maybe have another grouping over there. It's a lot of Daxlate walls, but we've used so many, they can't stop now. So our goal today is to get this intake bay done. And then Mark asked if we could please get these things running. So Steven here is running all the plumbing. We've got pipe running through all of these. We're going to plug these up, get water coming up through these and all this water is going to be cascading down into this intake bay which should look pretty cool let's see all right here we go <laughs> we got it running. It is about the most unfinished project I've ever been on, but we said it was going to be difficult. We battled some weather. We had lots of groundwater. We had a lot to do. It's a massive thing to try to create in four days, plus a waterfall competition in the middle of it all. So you guys, if you ever get a chance to come out to the UK, make sure you stop out here. The pond tour alone in this place is worth seeing. So many different projects. This thing is going to get so much better. He's going to have all those Japanese koi in here pretty soon and get this wetland behind me finished. Hopefully next year I can come back and help build a massive waterfall coming into that wetland. More importantly, I want to come back just to see the deck and the patio and how they're going to finish everything else. You guys, I hope you like this episode. It was a ton of fun. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Charlotte, for everything. Uh, bringing me out, inviting me out, and letting me use 33 Dax Slate walls. You have set a world record. Go get them. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us your favorite part. We'll do it real soon. Bye.